Good morning, GDX. My name is Jason Winters. I'm here with Elena Miganova. And we're going to be talking about designing beautiful analytics apps and dashboards. Before we begin, as always, please make your purchasing or investment decisions based on what is readily available today, because we will be looking at some future things as well. As we all know, design in any project can be the villain or it can be the hero. So our goal is today is to help you to become design heroes. And we're going to do that by sharing some of our best practices of the analytics uh, user experience team, but also just Salesforce in general, how we look at designing products. And these design best practices are applicable to really any project. They're sort of the basics of design thinking, but today we're really looking at them in the context of designing for analytics. So before we get begin, just a little exercise. Let's clear our minds. We'll use Zen Astro here to kind of just start from scratch. We want the beginner's mind. So let's picture a dashboard in, in, in your brain. What do you think of when you just close your eyes and think of a dashboard? Might look something like this. What is that? Often it's a dense grid. Static document, uh, organized into folders. Information overload, it's answering many questions at once with no real hierarchy to how the questions are being answered. Uh, not terribly actionable. Um, the data's there, the insights might be there, but how do I take action from that dashboard? And eventually these are forgotten because they are a, a document model and documents have a life cycle and they're used, they're organized in the folders, and you move on. Now let's picture an app. What do you think of when I say the word app? You might think of something like this. And what is this? Dynamic and layered focused and task oriented. The whole design of the application is to complete a task. Device appropriate, actionable. Something that's designed, not authored. Again, thinking in, in terms of designing applications versus authoring documents. And as a user of an application, you expect it to be updated regularly. You expect the designers and the builders of that application to be listening to your feedback, iterating on that, and making improvements. We really encourage all of our customers to think in terms of analytic apps, not just dashboards. What does that look like? Here's just some examples for inspiration. These are from our sales analytics uh, templates that come out of the box with Einstein Analytics. I'm just gonna click through a, a few examples here so you start to see some of the patterns that, are, that we use in these templates. But it's not just about standalone analytics apps. You want this to be embedded throughout your Salesforce experience because you're, wherever your users are, that's their app, that's their experience. And you wanna elevate that to be an intelligent experience driven by analytics in Einstein. So on each record page, you can embed insights, you can embed charts, you can embed to make that whole app experience. So as we talk about these design best practices, think of it first, I'm designing intelligent experience and apps for my users. And second, you know, it can be anywhere that I can embed these analytics and insights, including mobile. So again, I encourage you to think in terms of analytic apps, not just dashboards. Okay, so now we have some inspiration, but we need some principles to guide us. You may have seen these before, but at Salesforce, our user experience team uses four guiding principles that are in priority order as sort of guardrails, as we're looking at our designs and evaluating them, we look at them with these lenses. We think in terms of clarity, efficiency, consistency, and beauty. And again, these are prioritized. So if something is consistently bad, that's not good, right? We, it needs to be clear and efficient first. If it's beautiful and not clear, also not good. So just think about that in these terms and that priority order as you're evaluating your different projects. On the analytics side, we also have a principle of fluidity. You'll see as, as our charts and our dashboards interact and move, you know, we breathe life and responsiveness in every interaction with that fluidity. Okay, so now we've got some inspiration, we've got some guiding principles, time for action. One of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes, can't have a design presentation without quoting Steve Jobs. But design is not just what it looks like and feels like, design is how it works. And often when we think about design thinking, or, we, or even someone says the word design, we start at the surface. That's where most people think about design. Colors, brands, fonts, 
right? How big is the logo? You go deeper, you have structure, the layout of the app, the scope of the app, how you navigate and flow between pages. But at the deepest level, the part you never really see is purpose. That's your user's intentions and their goals. And just like an iceberg, right, that's the deepest part, that's the where you want to spend the majority of your, of your time, really, is that part that's not always seen. So how do we do that? We do that through an iterative process, empathizing with our users, ideating, designing and testing, learning, going back. And that first step is really empathy. For that, I'll hand it over to Elena. So how do you actually build your path to empathy? How do you actually implement it in your apps and dashboard designs? Just start by asking yourself a very simple question of who you're building for, who is your user? So understanding who your user is and who is going to use your product is a bedrock of your good design. You need to understand users' goals, what the success looks like for your user in order to build um, empathy in your designs. How do you capture all those points? You build something that we call a persona in user experience. And what persona is, it's basically a summary of all the key insights about your user. What are their motivations? What are their frustrations? What does success look like for them? It's basically an abstract person with a real title, real job, and real problems that you capture in a persona. How do you build that persona? You follow a simple process of that's called path of inquiry. What path of inquiry is, it's basically a structured outline of the information that your user needs in order to success. To, in order to build the path of inquiry, you follow simple steps by starting with defining user goals, listing all the questions that they need to answer in order to reach those goals, in order to be successful. Once you capture all the important goals and questions, you start looking for patterns and grouping any similar goals and questions into themes, which will later on help you actually think through the scope of your project. And once you figure out all those themes, it'll be clear for you whether you need one app or multiple apps, one dashboard or multiple dashboards, how many pages you need within your dashboard, so it all makes sense for your user. Once you capture all that information, it's time to prioritize all questions and goals and themes that you came up with, which is also going to help you with the scoping of your project and laying out your content. Only after going through those core steps, only then you get to actually think about the data. What actual data my user needs to answer all those questions and reach their goals? So as you can see, there's a lot of work that you need to do before actually trying to surface all data that's available for your user. And last but not least, our dashboards needs to be actionable in order to be super helpful for our user. So you need to also think about identifying the key business actions that your user may want to take after looking through all that information. And that's it, that's your end. <laughs> you empathize with your user. Uh, those were really simple steps and uh, with a very significant outcome. So you build a clear understanding of who your user is, what's their goal, and um, what's the business actions they need to take. And I think a really important point here is that, you know, often when people think about starting a design process, they think about getting aligned on pictures, right? But really, when we start a design process, we're getting aligned on words, right? We start at words, we're basically creating an outline. And that's where you want to, you know, the sort of the cheapest asset that you can iterate on is words. To prove that it's cheap, you can see that the path of inquiry is basically a bunch of sticky notes. That's your brainstorming process very low investment, and those circle dots that you see, it's actually helping you with prioritization. So you do a group exercise, everyone gets to vote on the most important parts, and then you get a clear picture and everyone is aligned. The next step to your beautiful apps and dashboards would be ideation. So once you build a clear understanding of who your user is, once you went through the user's path of inquiry, now it's time to brainstorm on the actual answers to the user's questions. And what you do is you ideate with your team to get those answers and sketch them. Again, this is a very low... Low, low cost. <laughs> very low cost process. You only need a paper 
some markers, some sticky notes, but most importantly, bring your open mind to the ideation session. Be open to share the ideas, to get feedback, to iterate on your ideas. The ideation session usually goes with a format of design studio, which is a brainstorming session taking anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, depending on the actual scope of your product. It follows uh, simple steps. You start with, everyone starts with sketching their ideas. Then everyone presents their ideas to their team. And um, after that, everyone discusses and sorts the sketches. So again, it helps to share ideas and get feedback from people maybe that you typically don't work with usually. And last but not least, you again get to prioritize the most important sketches or the ones that actually resonate the most with your users or your teammates or even stakeholders. And the more people you bring into this process early on, uh, you start to build a, sh a shared ownership of a design, right? So if you bring some of the stakeholders in early on and they're part of that process, later on when you're reviewing designs with them, they're going to be much more bought into the process because they have a shared ownership of the design. And what's cool about Design Studio is everyone can do it. You don't need to be an artist, although if you are, your sketches will be probably really cool. But everyone can scribble their ideas out. It's an iterative and generative process. It's all about generating as many ideas as possible, getting this early feedback, like Jason mentioned. So as you can notice, at that point, you did not really invest any time in actual development. You didn't spend any time on your machine trying to build some data that probably user will not found that useful. Um, and most importantly, you get to inspire each other. You get to work with your team and uh, get important feedback before you actually start investing a lot of time in building the product. Back to you, Jason. Okay. So we're starting to get more into the structure of the application now. And that really starts with organization. And there's different ways of organizing your apps. You can think of it as a task-driven structure. So in the case of our service analytics apps, all right, we have organizers by case, team, channels, account. Or you can think about it driven by personas. In the case of our sales analytics app structure, we have them organized by sales leader, sales manager, sales rep. And the, the structure of your app starts to reflect that path of inquiry, right? So each page is starting to answer a question. Your overview page might answer three or four questions that drive you down to secondary or tertiary questions. But sometimes our dashboards end up looking like this, right? So what is this? This is that information overload that we were talking about. And so how do you scale that back? Much of design is an editing process, right? And you balance visual simplicity with information density, and we have some tools for doing that. One, we follow good design principles just like, like a newspaper, right? We start with a headline, a body, the details. There's a hierarchy involved here. What that looks like in terms of our, our templates out of the box for Einstein Analytics, we have navigation and branding at the top. We have some, a filter bar. Often we'll have a headline summary, which is that first couple seconds to answering that question. Uh, a, a supporting hero visualization, which will help facet the, the details below. Potentially some supporting visualization and those actionable detail lists. Everything you're doing above that is really kind of to move really uh, facet and filter down that actionable list so you can take action. We also use uh, patterns like the F pattern, your eye moving down naturally from the top to the bottom, left to right. Z pattern, more of a top down, uh, often using mobile. If you're doing comparison, we might use a side by side pattern. Another tool we can use is progressive disclosure, right? So we don't want to show everything at once, just like your, your, in your kitchen cabinet. If all the doors were open at once in, the, in your kitchen, that'd be a little overwhelming. When you need something, you open the door, you take it out. So how can we do that? And for that, we're going to demo a few things. So if we can bring up the demo screen. So the first one we're going to look at is zooming in, all right? So on the right, you see how it a, a demo of how this actually used uh, our page transitions to actually zoom into a metric. So you're not showing all the details at once, you're not revealing all the filters at once, but when you zoom in, you get more information. Another pattern we like is an accordion. All right? What an accordion allows us to do is summarize some metrics again and show the details as the section opens up and closes. You can also use a common pattern like inspection panels, using a panel that opens and closes on the side to hide and show. Another one we like is, is the curtain. So sometimes 
You know, sometimes people just want to see the data in a table, and they're used to seeing it the way they see it in Excel or a spreadsheet. So you might summarize the metrics at the top and then reveal more of your dashboard. That's a great way to sort of onboard people onto new patterns. But uh, Elena, why don't you go into edit mode and kind of show what's happening here. So here we are in the analytics studio. This is the designer tool. And these animations you get for free just as page transitions between two pages on the dashboard. So there's one page with the grid expanded and another page with it um, uh, closed. And when you go into the uh, preview mode, these two are linked together. And you get that, that, that fluid transition. That all is done for you for free in the designer tool of Einstein Analytics. It's pretty awesome. OK, so now we talked, about, uh, we talked about purpose, understanding your user's intentions. We talked about sort of the structure of applications. What about that, that, that surface part, right, the, the, the look and feel? And also, you know, that's one of the things, those principles we talked about, consistency, and, and but also efficiency, in this case, efficiency of development. So let's say here we are at Trailhead, uh, and I got my Trailhead site on the right, and I pulled off some of the colors and the brand from that, and I started building out a style guide directly in Einstein Analytics as a dashboard. So my, my dashboard here isn't a real dashboard that I'm going to give to the users. It's something that I'm going to use as a designer and developer of the dashboards as a template to make uh, my dashboards and my projects more consistent. So in this case, I've saved off some of my favorite cards and components on a second page. They're all here. I'm using my trailhead purple mountain color here. I've customized it to, to the look I want for my company. If I go over to the third page, I've got a standard sort of template that I want to use for all of my dashboards. Right, so now, when I go to build a dashboard, if we go into edit mode, I've got these three pages. One is my styles, one's my pidgets, my widgets, and one is my uh, page template. Right, I can start off each project but just by cloning a page, selecting the components I want to uh, start off with, and a great practice as, as well is to use demo data. So you just create a CSV of the data that you want to use, right? Upload that into Einstein Analytics and prototype your designs. Don't worry about the data flows. Don't worry about getting everything sort of correctly set up on the data side first. Really design and test your projects by just using demo data. And that's what we did here for this style guide. And then you can quickly clone any of those components to any new page and start building that as a sort of a fast start to consistently uh, designing uh, each of your pages. So on the surface side, that's a great way to drive consistency uh, and efficiency. And you can, uh, you can either build your own style guides uh, or we'll make this one available for you as well. Okay, so back to the slides. Um, that's it for today. Uh, what I'll encourage you to do is actually to go out Follow our Einstein Analytics trails. There's even one there for design best practices that covers a lot of this material today. Uh, you can also reach out to me directly on Twitter or in the Trailblazer community. I'd love to give you a copy of our Einstein Analytics book, e even in a, a digital form or uh, some of our physical copies that we have. Uh, that shows you some of our examples as well as some of these best practices as well. Finally, uh, on the second floor, you can go and you can build your own dashboards. Uh, do you want to talk a little about this, Elena, since you've uh, made our templates for it? Yeah, that's a pretty fun exercise where you actually get to go through the path of inquiry, get to build a simple dashboard using stickers. It's super fun. And this year, we added a new intelligence layer to it. So besides just building a dashboard, you can actually plan on what kind of predictions you would like to make based on all that information in your dashboard for your user. And it's also a template with the stickers, super fun. Come check it out. And we've had some customers from Dreamforce Pass who have taken those stickers, turned them into magnets for their whiteboards, um, found them super useful. So it's a great way for you to go right now and test out your, your skills uh, and learn how to use the design, uh, the path of inquiry. With that, thank you very much. And uh, have a great TDX.